I trimmed their manes and tails and worked all six in the round corral until I was satisfied they'd be reliable under saddle. Well, about the time I thought I had my work pretty well finished, the big sleepy-eyed sorrel in my string swallowed his head one morning and took me to church. I had been working on his reining, turning him double, stopping, and what not, and I had figured to give him a lesson in backing up. Apparently this skill was not in the sorrel's repertoire, and he had no real desire to learn it. He boiled over and went to chinning the moon, and he nearly unloaded me the first jump. He had took me by surprise, and no mistake. I lost my right stirrup, found it again, and bounced all over the saddle until I got myself centered and began to make a ride. I commenced to punish the big horse with my spurs, and I stuck to him like stink to a skunk. Directly his pitching began to slow, but I took a deep seat and kept on a spurring until at length he hollered at Uncle and went back to behaving himself. It had been a near thing, but it had ended well. I hadn't been throwed, the big sorrel's tantrum had been dealt with, and he had repented of his folly. I rode him around the corral, then turned and rode him back the other way. I reined him to the right and to the left. I even backed him up without protest on his part. Finally, I stepped down and rubbed his neck, talking to him soft and telling him what a blue-ribbon cowhorse he was. I had been so busy dealing with the sorrel's rebellion that I hadn't saw the rider draw rein. I see they put Rusty in your string, said a soft voice. That was quite a ride you made. I jerked my head around so fast I'm surprised I didn't break my neck. There, just outside the corral, sat Julie McAllister, astride a handsome black mare. I hadn't seen her since she'd come back to the ranch. I recalled her as a big-eyed, freckled-faced kid, long of limb and awkward as a new foal. One look told me my recollection was seriously out of date. Julie had changed so much that I scarcely recognized her. She had filled out in all the right places and had grown to be a fine-looking woman. Her eyes were still big, and they were dark and deep now in the fading light of late afternoon. Beneath a pearl-gray Stetson, her long hair cascaded down her back, black as her eyes, black as the mare she rode. There was nothing of the awkward youngster about her any longer. Julie sat her silver-mounted saddle with confidence and grace. Only her smile seemed the same, sweet and clean, but shadowed by sorrow. Uh, howdy, Julie. Uh, Miss McAllister, I stammered, snatching my hat off. I reckon the red son of a... The sorrel caught me off guard. She laughed. No need to apologize, she said. You really made a fine ride, and you can call me Julie. I haven't changed all that much, have I? Uh, no, ma'am. I mean, yes, ma'am. You're looking fine, Miss, uh, Julie. Thanks, Merlin. Waco tells me you're going out with the Roundup this year. Yes, I'm, I'm Jingler for the outfit, the horse wrangler. 